I have a, a question here from a frustrated Christian. Uh, let me just read it, and then I'll respond to it. I've grown frustrated with atheists saying to me that they don't have to give any arguments or any evidence to support their view because they're not making any claims. They have a non-belief. One atheist told me he's not required to provide evidence that there are no fairies living under his house either. This seems so cheap, so lame, yet I'm not sure how to make that obvious to them. What do you suggest? Well, I agree that I, I think this is cheap and I, I think it's lame. If I were an atheist, I, I wouldn't take this line of argument because it strikes me as intellectually dishonest. Uh, there are actually two different issues here. Um, first of all, whether or not atheists have a belief and whether, or whether they can get away with the kind of claim that they just simply have as a non-belief about God. And secondly, whether they bear any responsibility to give any evidence for their point of view. Uh, by the way, the short answer to both of those questions is yes and yes. Uh, they do have a belief. It's absolutely evident. And they do bear some responsibility under these particular circumstances. So let me take them one at a time and give you a little bit more, more detail. Um, no author writes a book and no person enters into a discussion or even an argument about their non-beliefs because there's nothing to write about. There's nothing to discuss. If what was in view here were the non-beliefs that atheists have about something, since there is no belief one way or another, then there would be nothing to write about or discuss. But atheists get into discussions all the time um, they, because they have a point of view. And they write books all the time because they have beliefs. Now, they don't have a belief in God, um, but that doesn't mean they have a non-belief. They have no belief that there is a God, but rather they have a belief that God doesn't exist. So they, they, they believe the opposite. That's not the same as having a non-belief. Uh, from what I understand, uh, England has rugby teams. Regarding the question of which rugby team in England is the best team, I have a non-belief. I can't even enter into the discussion because I have absolutely no information, so I am not capable of forming an opinion, and that's why I haven't. But when it comes to the question of God, atheists have entered into the debate. If they have entered into the debate, they are advancing positions. If they are advancing positions, then they're, then they're communicating convictions, and if they're communicating the convictions, they're relaying their beliefs. So they actually hold a belief about God, and that belief is that he does not exist. Why can't they just admit this? That would be intellectually honest, and if I were an atheist, uh, I would do that. And this brings us to the second issue, though. If they were to admit properly that they do have a belief, that is, the belief that God does not exist, do they have any requirement to give evidence for this view? Or does it kind of win by default? Um, the point was made about believing in fairies or rather rejecting the idea of belief in fairies under the house. Um, I agree that no one has to give any evidence for their belief that there are no fairies under the house. And the reason is, is because there is no reason to believe that there might be some fairies under the house. So just a dismissal of the idea or a rejection of the idea is completely appropriate. But that is not the case with the existence of God. Look at 99% of the people in the world believe in God. Uh, and they believe in God for good reason. If you hold a point of view that is different from 99% 9 of the people in the world, uh, if you reject a fact that seems to be evident to almost everybody, then you bear some responsibility to give an accounting there. And the fact is, um, there are powerful arguments that have been advanced in favor of the existence of God. Now, some people may not think they go through, but there is evidence and so since there is evidence, and there are powerful arguments, and, the, and, and therefore the common attitude of, of virtually everybody is that there is some kind of supreme being, when you reject what seems to be obvious to everyone else, you bear a burden to give your reasons for that objection. And to, to, to sit back and to wave all of those believers off uh, with a dismissal um, is just intellectually dishonest. They bear a responsibility here. And I guess my simple challenge to them would be, if you have a non-belief, you wouldn't be in this discussion because you have nothing to talk about. You have a belief. 
and your belief is contrary to what almost everyone else holds to be true with reason, and therefore you have an obligation to address that with something from your side instead of just a simple shrug. If a shrug is all you give me, then I have no obligation to take your view, your rejection of God's existence, seriously at all.